Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll have a look at the weather warnings as we do have yellow warnings now in force for wind over the course of this weekend then we'll have a look at the mid-range forecast looking at the GFS, GEM, ESMDF and the various ensembles and we're going to finish up having a look at the five day precipitation and, precipitation and temperatures from the UK Met Office run. Now we've got heavy rain spreading in over the UK at the moment. We're going through a few unsettled days here as low pressure does park uh, itself over the top of the UK. But the mid-range still has a lot of high pressure involved and we could be seeing some very warm temperatures next week. There also could be some colder times as well with more of a continental flow bringing lower dew points, overnight frost, but it should generally be dry regardless of what sort of air mass we do see. There will be showers around of course, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a massive washout by any means over the next couple of weeks. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you do like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Also do check out the video or the podcast um, that came out earlier for everyone. Have a look back at this past winter, why it was mild and snowless really, um, and why we had such high hopes and why it did disappoint. So do check that out if you're interested to see what really happened over the last three months. So as you start with the live radar, you can see we've got a band of pretty moderate rain moving through, some heavier bursts within there, but by no means torrential rain. Not too many yellows or reds on there, but a lot of darker greens showing this moderate to heavier pulses of rain. It's now clearing from the far south, which are the worst conditions over the course of the morning and early afternoon, and it's spreading further northwards and eastwards with heaviest rain really now across northern England, parts of Wales as well. But regardless of where you are, it's going to be cloudy and showery. It's going to slowly spread eastwards and northwards, sort of fizzling away as it does, but we do have more low pressure to come over the next sort of 40 hours. So this is not the last bit of rain really for anyone we're going to be seeing more rain especially further westwards and stronger winds as well we do have yellow warnings put in force for that so even if you are without rain at the moment it's likely you'll either see more rain of course this evening as the weather fronts move in or you'll see more rain tomorrow and sunday so we do now have a look at the weather warnings you can see no weather warnings at the moment but we do now have yellow warnings in force for wind through Saturday and Sunday. Now there's one across the far southwest from 1 p.m. until 7 p.m. tomorrow, i.e. Saturday, a spell of wet, windy and wet weather during Saturday afternoon, may lead to some travel disruption. Further details, you can see widely 50 to 55 miles per hour on the coast through Saturday afternoon, and perhaps as high as 60 miles per hour in the most exposed parts of Cornwall and southwest Wales. Inland gusts will tend to peak at 45 to 50 miles per hour away from hills and mountains. Winds will then ease a little bit during the evening. High likelihood, lower end of the impact matrix. So it's not going to be too uh, disruptive, but it could be very blustery out there and could take some people by surprise. If you have a look at Sunday, we can see we have more yellow warnings in force. I just zoomed in there a bit too quickly. Now you can see uh, for this wind warning across far southwest and across parts of Wales again. From midnight on Sunday until midday on Sunday, strong winds may cause transport and coastal disruption. Again, 50 to 60 miles per hour southerly winds along coastal districts before clearing northwards later Sunday. And there's a small chance that a few places across West Cornwall and Pembrokeshire could see isolated 65 miles per hour. Some poor coastal conditions and transport disruption. High likelihood, a lower impact again. If we have a look at the other warnings further northwards, you can see again, strong winds may cause transport and coastal disruption from 3am until 2pm. Again, affecting parts of the Irish Sea, 50 to 60 miles per hour across Northern Ireland and far southwest of Scotland. And again, you can see high likelihood, lower end of the impact matrix. So, not crazy winds. Max gusts of maybe 60, 65 miles per hour, maybe an isolated 70 miles per hour, but that's nowhere near as bad as we had with the name storms just a few weeks ago where we were seeing those widely inland and coastal areas seeing 90 or 100 miles per hour. So nowhere near as disruptive as that, but it could catch a few people by surprise. So of course, if you are going towards the uh, the west um, over this weekend along to the coast, do make sure you do take precautions and of course... Don't take any risks out in the wind, because even though it is major and it's only a yellow warning, it is still disruptive and could still um, cause some impacts. 
So do now have a look at the media range forecast, have a look at the GFS, GM and ECM WF. I have to quickly update this because as I'm recording this, the midday run is actually coming out. Um, we only got to 270 hours, but with how the GFS is behaving recently, um, I don't suspect there's any point looking beyond maybe even 240 hours um, as it really is um, uh, all over the place with some of its runs showing bitterly cold easily winds over the last few days that we have had a look at but completely disregarded them really because it hasn't got no support so we do run through it and see what it's showing today now you can see low pressure is dominating with that quite vigorous low over the course of tomorrow into sunday and that's why we have those yellow warnings in force across western areas with those tightening of the ice bars now beyond that High pressure starts to build back in. You can see all those yellows start to build back in. That's higher heights. And you do see by next week, we are starting to build in winds from a southeasterly direction, originating from North Africa. Now, it is pretty warm, but we're not going to get the hottest air in. And it really is only going to cover parts of the far south into England and Wales as well. Um, and it could give temperatures perhaps... Two to four, six degrees above average. And if we do have a look at the two metre... Uh, temperature look over the course of United Kingdom through Wednesday afternoon. You can see temperatures peaking 14, 15 degrees. And remember that is at midday uh, looking in the afternoon, maybe 15, 16 degrees. And you can see 17, 18 degrees across France. So still undecided completely what temperatures it could get to. But we're still potentially going to be seeing 18 to 20 degrees is very possible next Wednesday. And even to Thursday, there is still a little bit of warmer air around. And there is the possibility of again seeing maybe 15, 16 degrees in a few spots. But no means it's a guaranteed, but it could be some warmer, brighter weather for anyone out there next week. We do start to bring quite a brisk easterly wind, and it's mild initially, but actually turns much colder towards 180 hours. Now, we're not seeing this from any of the other models, which is bizarre. Um, considering the GFS is really going for this quite consistently. But again, it's another, uh, I'm pretty sure it's another one of these GFS runs where it does sort of overdo it a little bit. And you can see real cold air mass comes through in Scotland and Northern England. That would produce a lot of snow showers with that. For the southwards, not quite as cold, but still getting that cold air mass in. So very interesting seeing that. And eventually we do end up we're still with high pressure to our east, low pressure to our west, trying to bring up southerly winds. But we're actually on the more unsettled side in between weather systems with a real mixing of air masses in 279 hours. If you look at the pressure charts you can see we're sort of in between systems high pressure close by low pressure close by so it'll be on and off showers some dry periods and sort of up and down temperatures probably around average some areas seeing some warmer days some seeing some colder days so a little bit in between there as we'll see with the other runs in a minute they very much more are, are under the high pressure in complete dominance in sort of the day 10 time frame so again another one of these gfs runs is a little bit more wacky but of course we can't discount it the gfs run has been right before but it just sometimes is a little bit uh sort of normally on one end of the spectrum um going for some weird wacky conditions um without a lot of support really so we do now have a look at the gm run see what that is going for again low pressure dominating over the next couple of days and then high pressure builds in firmly for next week with those southerly winds potentially bringing in some milder air. And then as we head towards 180 hours when the GFS run is starting to bring in pretty chilly easterly winds, GM run has big area of high pressure dominating over the top of the UK. No real low pressure in sight. Now there is a bit of an easterly flow with that and that could in the far south and east keep temperatures down a little bit. And of course it is still middle of March so we can still see a bit of an inversion under that. It wouldn't be bitterly cold but temperatures would be in the mid to low single digits across many parts of um, the United Kingdom towards the centre of this low pressure uh, sort of this high pressure system but in the day likely to see mid to low teens with nice warm spring sunshine perfect conditions if you're out if you don't want to go out do some exercise or out do some gardening very good conditions here so GM pretty much the perfect run for anyone out there who's wanting some proper spring like conditions cold chilly mornings but will be pleasant mild and even maybe even warm days um again if you have a look at those upper air temperatures you see it's not massively mild but it's not massively cold either you have the temperature deviation it's a couple degrees above average maybe two to four but nothing too crazy and with the inversion most likely won't feel massively above average but we'll still feel nice in the sunshine as i said so gm run looking really good there
So if we have a look at the ECMWF run, see how that does compare. Again, low pressure dominating over the next couple of days, but high pressure building by sort of Tuesday, Wednesday time. And those pretty balmy southerly winds uh, for a period of time, bringing up some really quite warm air, actually. ECMWF really getting that sort of warm air in. Be able to look at those two meter temperatures down into central southern England, widely mid-teens, perhaps even getting a little bit higher than that. Now, if we do have a look at, at sort of mid-afternoon, you can see temperatures really getting up perhaps to 15, 16 degrees there. So it could be really quite warm on Wednesday. Again, depends on exact conditions, exact wind directions. If it's coming more from an easterly direction, having more of a sea track will bring those temperatures down. But coming straight southerly, could be quite warm there indeed. So I have to see exactly what happens with that midweek. Beyond that, though, high pressure does build in, firmly build in, a bit of an easterly flow, so it could keep those temperatures down a little bit, and we do see a bit of a pocket of colder air, but nothing crazy by any means. Generally, upper air temperatures, if you look at the temperature deviation, around and slightly up or down above average, so, so also slightly higher and below average, so nothing too crazy. will be some chillier nights, will be some chillier days, but there will also be some milder and uh, milder nights and more milder days, just depending on exact wind directions, cloud amounts, etc. So, eastern air, a bit in between, but still a lot of high pressure. And you just look at those pressure charts, um, a massive area of high pressure will be dominating over the top of the UK. Um, and you can see it right there. Um, yeah, the center isn't quite over the top, and it's quite a weak area of high pressure by this stage, but it's still high pressure regardless, and it's still going to be pretty decent indeed for drier, brighter, um, and dry, brighter weather. So we now have a look at the ensembles. If you have a look at the GFS starting off, you can see around average at the moment, dipping a little bit below average over the coming days with more low pressure. Then we see this big rise next week, and that's where we could see those quite warm temperatures by Wednesday, Thursday time. Um, you can see most of the ensemble members going to around 5 or 6 degrees at age of 850 HPA, coupled with sunshine. It's going to be pleasant. Beyond that, temperatures do slowly dip down to around average, maybe slightly below, slightly above run this is the six head run so not the one we looked at it's pretty cold with easterly winds and again it's uh the gfs going for one of the more extreme scenarios the majority of runs are in and around average if not above average with pleasant dry conditions so not looking too bad there on the ensembles again precipitation is down and not no, no nothing completely out of the picture in terms of um precipitation but definitely uh, not a massive uh, wet signal like we have seen um, before. Look at the sea level pressure, you can see generally higher pressure, around 1,020 millibars and above. Uh, pretty typical of high pressure over the top and to our north and east. So decent there uh, for dry weather. And you can see the little low pressure bumps we have now um, as a result of the low pressure systems we do have. If we do have a look at the ECM WF run, have a look at the 850 HPA temperature and precipitation. You can see a rad average at the moment, then firmly going well above average for uh, the middle of next week, staying well above average. A few dipping down quite quickly, perhaps showing a little bit of a colder uh, pool of air coming in from the east, but majority is staying around or well above average. And then we see quite a big drop off to around or below average. Quite a few ensemble members are going for quite a bitterly cold scenario, down to minus 10 at 850 HPA, perhaps getting real proper easterly winds in. Because it's only maybe a quarter of the runs, and given there's over 50 ensemble members, it's not too unexpected to be seeing a few get down there. You can see, though, by the average, it's still in around the 1981-2010 mean. So, no massive signal at this stage, quite a few still going above average. So, it's just something to keep an eye on in the longer term, and of course, it's still around 10 days away. So, we can't say anything uh, with too much certainty. But, at least for the next seven days, it's looking pretty dry for many after, well, beyond the next sort of 48 hours, and potentially quite warm next week with temperatures, especially in England and Wales, getting up to maybe 15 to 17 degrees with proper spring sunshine. If you now have finish up, I have a look at the UK Met Office run now. The next five days are going to be up and down. We're going to be seeing some brighter weather. We're going to be seeing some cloudy and some rainy weather. Now, you can see the rain that's spreading over the course of today. Patchy in terms of its intensity, but quite widespread in terms of cloud and rain amounts. Perhaps quite a bit more rain than actually is showing here on the UK Met Office run in reality. So the weather front has held together a little bit more than uh, the run had expected. Over the course of the evening, more showers are packing in from the west. Quite heavy, especially in the far southwest, could be there through Saturday morning. But by sunrise, you can see heavier rain in the north, but clearing in the south. Maybe some thicker cloud before we see another weather front approach from the far southwest. So in the afternoon tomorrow, it could be quite dry, especially further eastwards and southwards, before we see weather fronts arriving in the far southwest. And that's with those stronger wind gusts.
Beyond that, precipitation does spread through once again through Saturday night into Sunday. Again, patchy in terms of its intensity, but fairly widespread instead of cloud and lighter rain. Move through through Sunday, eventually slowly clearing away, but seeing a lot of showers through Sunday evening before it clears away by early hours of Monday. Nothing too crazy. Showers in the north and maybe a widespread outbreak of a few showers further southwards in Monday, but nothing too crazy. By Tuesday, weather front's trying to approach, but this is where we got that high pressure trying to take control twice, trying to build back in. It could be quite a messy picture right at the end of the run. By early hours of Wednesday, you can actually see a weather front in the far south. I suspect that is a warm front uh, ahead of the milder air, trying to spread up from the south. If we do have a look at those 850 HPA temperatures, you can see that there, the warm pool of air to our south, 5 to 10 degrees 850 HPA, much colder air to our north, and that's pushing up from the south, trying to give us some warmer temperatures on Wednesday. Uh, and it's definitely winning out on this latest UK Met Office run. So if you now have a look at the 2 metre temperatures over the next 5 days, you can see today didn't get massively mild, in around 10 to 12 degrees, maybe a couple of degrees colder under more of the thicker cloud and heavier rain. Over the course of the evening, temperatures are not going to drop away too much as we've got a lot of cloud around as well, so mid to high single digits. Tomorrow, again, won't be a massively great day in terms of temperatures, but I said it will be cloud and rain, especially further westwards and northwards, but maybe 10 to 12 degrees in the far east. By Sunday, not too cold overnight once again, and by the day, we're going to see temperatures once again, 10 to 12 degrees in the in the sunnier um, spots with without the rain and thicker cloud. Again, nothing too cold overnight once again. And by Monday, again, 10 to 13 degrees, perhaps cold in a few spots. By Tuesday, again, not too cold overnight. Starting so those temperatures rise, 12 to 14 degrees in the far southeast. And by Monday, early hours, we're starting to see those milder air push up from the south. And again, in tomorrow's video, when we have a look at Wednesday on the UK Metals run, I'm expecting to potentially be seeing 15 to 17 degrees, maybe even warmer if we do get those real warm upper air temperatures, maybe 10 degrees at 850 HP. If we did see that come in, wouldn't be surprised if we did see high teens, maybe even an isolated 20 degrees. So it's quite up and down over the next few days, but definitely does look like high pressure is firmly in the signal for uh, well firmly in control over the mid to longer term um and fingers crossed it's going to give us some pleasant sunny and maybe even some warm uh, march conditions so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon